Hello, it's Rebecca and today is another book review day and I will apologise before I start, I read this book absolutely ages ago before I got ill and when I was ill I just couldn't do anything so I couldn't even do a review of it so I do apologise if I've forgotten or miss anything or whatever so I will just do what I normally do, I'll read you the blurb and talk to you about the book but please forgive me if I'm a little bit sketchy. So I have been reading Roomies by Sarah Zar and Tara Alterbrando. Try and say that with a mouthful of marbles. Hmm. Okay, so I'll read you the blurb and talk to you about the book. The countdown to university has begun. When Elizabeth receives her first year roommate assignment at the beginning of the summer, she shoots off an email to coordinate the basics. TV, microwave, mini fridge. She can't wait to escape her New Jersey beach town and her mum and start life afresh in California. That first note to Lauren in San Francisco comes as a surprise. She'd requested a single, but if Lauren's learned anything from being the oldest of six, it's that you don't always get what you want, especially when what you want is privacy. Soon the girls are emailing back and forth, sharing secrets even though they've never met. With family relationships and childhood friendships strained by change, it suddenly seems that the only people Elizabeth and Lauren can rely on are the complicated new boys in their lives. And each other. So I actually hunted down this book because last year I read a book called Believing by Tara Alterbrando. And I read it in two days. And as you know, I don't read anything in two days. I don't read the back of a cereal box in two days. I'm such a slow reader. But I read it, it was so fast paced and so quick and so gripping that I thought I need to read more by this author. So I did a little search at the library and the only other book that came up was this one. And it's co-written with another woman, Sarah Zar. So I picked this up, hoping that it would be as gripping and as good as Believing. It wasn't. Not to say that it was bad. So you've got the two characters, Elizabeth and Lauren. And I'm assuming, although I don't know, and please correct me if I'm wrong and you do know, that one character was written by one author and the other character was written by the other author because you can kind of see differences in the styles of writing and everything. And I think that would be a good way of doing it, is having one author write one bit and then the next author doing their bit. So the chapters alternate between Elizabeth and Lauren. And they're both teenage girls and they're getting ready to go to university after the summer holidays. And in America, not so much in England, and I don't really know much about the rest of the world when it comes to university, but I know in America, when you apply to go to university, you get allocated a room in the halls of residence, but you also get allocated a roommate, somebody that shares that room with you. In England, we don't do that. We have single rooms, which I'm so glad of because... I don't trust people and I really wouldn't want to share a room with somebody that I didn't like. I don't like people being there when I'm sleeping and oh I just find it a little bit creepy. But anyway in America you have a roommate. So Elizabeth has been sent Lauren's information by the university and Lauren feels the need to get in touch and almost start building a friendship and a relationship and it's it's so interesting the, the way it's written. So we we get to experience a little bit of Elizabeth. We learn about her life, her family, her friends. And she sends an email to Lauren. And first of all, that really upsets Lauren because she'd assumed that she would be given a single room and she's, ha she's going to have to share. And she doesn't really want to. So she's slightly reluctant to befriend Elizabeth because she thinks that she may be able to get a single room. So she kind of sends back a half-hearted email which then upsets Elizabeth, who then thinks, oh, is it really worth trying to build a friendship with this person who really isn't that interested? And I think the main message that comes out of this book is that the written word isn't always the best way to communicate because we do not know the intentions of the writer. And as the reader, we place our own prejudices, our own bias, our own thoughts and beliefs and assumptions, which is so, so dangerous, on what somebody else has written. And rather than coming out and saying, look, that, that message came across quite harsh, did you mean it that way? We then build these things up in our minds and create scenarios and situations that just aren't true. And this has happened to me, where somebody else misinterpreted something that I'd written and then took it off in an extreme way and didn't even bother to come to me and say look what you'd said really upset me 
can you explain what you were talking about? And I would have explained it, but they didn't. They just got these assumptions and then and then they'd built this their little beliefs around their own thoughts rather than what was actually happening. And this shows how dangerous that can be. So while we get to see Lauren in her life and her thoughts leading up to replying to these emails and Elizabeth's responses and we do get to see these characters we also get to see how easy it is to make mistakes and how easy it is to fall down and base reality in our own assumptions and our own beliefs and that's not always the best thing to do the best thing to do is to talk to people and sadly we don't talk to people anymore we've got technology at our fingertips where we can type messages to each other but to actually make a phone call and I remember and I'm so old I'm so old we used to have a rotary phone if you don't know what one of those is look it up that I'd go to school see my friends I'd come home from school and I'd phone them up even though we'd only been apart for about half an hour I'd still phone them up or I'd phone people up um friends that live down the road from me oh are you going out today what are you doing do you want to go out or I'd go to their house and knock on the door. I'd knock on people's doors and say, is so-and-so at home? Now, as an adult, I wouldn't dare do that. That would be terrifying because we've been so removed from human contact, which is so, so sad. And I would rather send a text message or an email. And I know that some things are best spoken about face-to-face, -face, but I like to, I like to hide behind my phone or my iPad and not kind of get involved in things and this is what happens here and it is brilliant in that respect although I do feel that this book is aimed more towards young adults and I've not got a problem with young adult literature because I think it can be read across the board it doesn't matter how old you are but I do feel that reading this as an adult it's not really that relevant the, the, the subject matter, the, these girls are going off to university, they've got their boyfriends, they've got their friends, they've got their little family situations. And as an adult, it's difficult to relate to this because either you didn't go to university, so you, you can't relate to it in that respect, or it's just such a long time ago that you've forgotten what it was like and it's just a part of your youth that you don't really want to reconnect with. So I won't say it's a bad book. It's not as good as Tara Alterbrando's The Leaving. But it's a good book in as much as it looking at the way we communicate with each other and how difficult it is and how easy it is to come to the wrong conclusions. So I did enjoy it. I wouldn't recommend this to everybody because I think the subject matter is very age specific and almost gender specific as well, reading it from the point of view of two young girls men might not want to read this and I'm not saying that you shouldn't but I'm just again my assumptions we shouldn't really assume I would just say this if you're a young girl going off to university or you're at university I'd say this book is for you otherwise read it don't read it I don't know it was good not brilliant but it did make you think about how we communicate what we say the way we say it or writer, I should say, because by the end they do have a phone call, but it's it's weird. It's weird after having read all their emails and all that kind of stuff. So good, not great, and read it if you want to, but I wouldn't rush out to it. So if you'd like to hear any of my other book reviews, then please subscribe to my channel. I put videos out every time I've read a book, done something bookish, bought books mainly. So if you're interested in reading and or writing, then please subscribe, and I will see you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.